and I'm back for another video with Charlie uh, in a part two of the prior one. We're going to look at the Wine Stealth and a Mopar M1, which is a little bit of a ringer because I have a, I, oh, excuse me, I had a buddy port it out. Uh, I'd like to thank John. You can find John over at uh, For A Bodies Only, where he posted flow tests of before, completely stock M1, and as he ported it along. Uh, John's from Pittsburgh, and he's a racer. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate it. Charlie loves your work. I love your work. Can't wait till I get to use it. So let's take a look at these runners and uh, intake manifolds. Okay, guys, you guys have seen this before. Flowed with my 770. We're going to we're gonna heads up test these on the Mission Impossible number eight cylinder, which is exactly the same. We didn't unbolt the head. We just went from the horrendous, <laughs> horrendous dual plane to a nice dual plane and got... A, a nice pickup. Now we're just going from a nice dual plane to a ported out single plane. Now, give us a little uh, a little talk about the plenum and wh why it's shaped that way. Okay. Basically, this intake manifold was designed a very long time ago for the stock cylinder head. There was no, at the time of this development, there was no aftermarket cylinder heads in aluminum uh, from anybody for the Mopar crowd. So, we had to work with with what we had. Mopar came up with this. Uh, it's very very similar to the Holly uh, strip dominator, and this plenum opening is for the of course the thermal quad, which helps the grass root racers. Oh yeah, I got my <laughs> thermal quad shirt on. And now a lot of guys with all oh, the thermal quad this that you know they could be a pain, but you know for a grassroots racer doing things on the cheap, you use the carburetor you have. Heck, I used to pick them up for twenty dollars. Not so anymore. This plenum, as delivered, as cast, Mopar would tell you to put some uh, dams in front or across, or you know, like just inside. You're gonna have to refer to the Mopar performance book. But yeah. now that we have it ported, okay. all of this area here. Hold up on, top, hold on a second. Let's put a little light on that so guys can see better. Okay, we can see down. We can see down this run. Yeah, now we can see. Now. Yeah. Uh, this is pulled back on the roof. You went down into the intake manifold. He didn't really mess with the floor too much. The divider of the runner just lightly touched. Doesn't need a lot of work. This thing really, really picked up on the CFMs. We got the port matched. This is well opened up to the gasket for the thermal quad. Everything bolts on and just operates flawlessly, no interference. So we have a much better flow coming in and wrap it around instead of the normally what you would see is a very sharp sharp just absolutely 90 degree type of roof corner very bad shears the fuel in the air as it's trying trying to make that turn which you know air has weight fuel has much more weight and all it wants to do is go in a straight line contouring it some helps it go around that corner that's a better flow easier pull Less, less power lost, more kinetic energy, better air-fuel mixture. It's a home run all the way around. Uh, I think I think a lot of guys, when uh, they take a stock intake and versus a ported intake, will notice a huge difference. There's no question about it. And if the guy that's doing the intake knows what he's doing and he really starts to balance out the runners, even better because now you're getting a much closer to the same volume in each cylinder. It's really going to make it happy. Okay, we just changed runners because this is actually the runner we, we ran. We ran we ran on number eight, okay? And uh, you can see the guy that did this did, did a nice job. I think John did a terrific job. It, it looks pretty good. Really. It looks good. Now, what do you think happens when you put a holly on this? Do you think that plenum is a problem if you put a holly on it? Because that's what we tested it with today. Yeah, you know, there was always that thought that this smaller area, this bulge out here, may actually cause a problem. Hold on. It's not bad. It actually has decent lighting on both runners, so knock this up out. Okay. Well, this bulge over here follows the thermal quads gasket and, you know, uh, butterfly area. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, is it affected with the holly? Is it really good? You know, can we remove it? Yeah. Maybe if we remove it, we might find some more. It's just kind of, you know, chasing the last little bit. Um, the real question is, is quality of fuel flow. 
um, are we losing CFM? Because this is much more uh, smaller and tighter through this area where, where you saw the backside where the secondaries are, are much more open. So, you know, it was any. Okay, sorry, Rob, I cut you off a little bit, but I, I just went and grabbed the Holly gasket. Notice that the Holly gasket is smaller than the thermal quad opening all around. So I'm not sure if if that plenum design is really going to make a detrimental difference. So what we decided to do is, uh, towards the end of this video, I think we'll compare our number eight runner to our number one runner and... Uh, We'll take a look and see uh, see what they did. Okay, guys, let's compare our flows between these two intakes. Here, this is our Wii and Stealth. You guys saw that before. These pluses and minuses are in reference to the other intake manifolds, so we're not going to disregard them. We're only going to look at these pluses and minuses, okay? This is the ported M1 going through the number 8 runner. All pluses, all wins, okay? Think about, think about that. Now... They're, they're really designed for two different purposes. This is a much more higher RPM unit. Do we know what the RPM range is? For the M1, it goes to 7,000 or 7,500, I think. Uh, 7,500 sounds, sounds about right for, yeah. for that size runner. It's very similar design to like a Victor Jr. Or Chevy, a Chevy Victor Jr. that I'm used to looking at. And uh, so we're all good here. But notice what happens with our, our swirl because... Because the runner is a different shape, right? See if you guys can see that curve there. Versus our curve there. It makes, it's, you know, it's different entrance. Plus, it's not exactly a match on the gasket. These both, these both had overhangs. But the, uh, the single plane's got a much worse overhang. All right, we should, maybe we should discuss what that overhang does. I'm going to make a, a real quick drawing and let's see if I can explain it. Okay, not a great drawing, guys, but you can see the way I did it. Right? I only put the overhang on one side. So the air is coming down from the intake. It hits that edge, and it literally starts to go right towards the middle. right? And it's going to cause turbulence on our fast curved wall side, which is going to limit our amount of actual area that's flowing well. Okay, so we never, you never really want this. Is it okay to go the other way and have your cylinder head port a little bit bigger than the intake? That's actually good. That you use that for anti-reversion. Okay, but a lot of guys don't do that. They want it all matched perfectly. I don't mind making the the cylinder head a little bigger. Now, when I did, I did these. They are the gasket size, and when uh, DV and Andy do their thing they can adjust it. It's, that, that will not bother me even a little bit. Because remember, I did these strictly to a gasket. I did not have it bolted to a block. When you take the heads and you bolt them to a block, then you can get everything right. Eric Weingartner did a great video on how to get them just right. He actually has a better system than me. So I would think I'm going to be using his system next time I, I do a port match on a block. Okay, we'll take a quick look at our, our swirl. Very interesting, right? Plus, minus, 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 equals, plus, minus, 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 plus, plus. All right, if you're not running a decent size cam, probably don't want this intake. I'm going to say I, I wouldn't run that intake with less than a, like a 500 lift cam, even if you're putting it on the street. Is that fair enough to say? Yeah, I mean, you really want to lift that valve as much as possible to take advantage of the head's airflow. And on a single plane, I, I, I've, I've come to notice that somewhere around the, you know, engine size dependent, you're really going to want to pick up that relation to around two. You know what? I'm looking at the wrong, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. I'm so sorry, guys. This is our next flow test, like a goofball. Uh, I started using this drawing because I already did it. The, these are not, this is a different test. I'm so sorry. Let's fix this. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. That last one where I was talking about the swirls, those are those are the wrong head. That's my, my Aussie Vic Jr. ported that we went heads up against this intake. I don't know if that'll fit on this, this video, and that might be our next video because we're already 10 minutes in. So take a look at all, what our swirl did going from the, the dual plane to the single plane ported. Minus, 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 plus, plus. 
much different swirl curve, okay? All right, this is a little bit different than the Vic Jr., okay? You're starting to get some action at 400. I would still run like a minimum of 500 lift on, on this. But that's just me. I don't have no problem running 500 plus lift, even in my old work truck. Uh, got anything else you want to say about that one runner? Because we're going to compare this runner to the uh, number one runner. For our no, next let's video. compare runners. The only other thing I got to say is 500 lift, in my opinion, is not that big of a lift. No, it's not. Get in there, yeah, run it. Run with it all day long. Absolutely. Mild stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.